this is a Motorola Spectra commercial radio like police or fire would use and uh, I've done videos on recapping these before but today I'm going to try something else which is to add a um, preamp to the front end and there's a kit on eBay I think it was around 20 bucks or something shipped and it's supposed to improve the sensitivity quite a bit on these I, the sensitivity is not great. They're really good performing radios. This is the UHF model. Uh, it's basically 450 to 470 megahertz, although it will drop down to 440, and I've modified it so it works down that low, but the sensitivity kind of really drops off even more below 450. So what this entails is adding a bunch of surface mount parts to an unpopulated part of the board which could be very challenging the first thing I'm going to do is I have it on uh, the 70 centimeter national calling frequency which is 440 and I got it hooked directly to the signal generator here and I'm going to just baseline the sensitivity on it so we can hear what it sounds like there at negative 100. Let's set this all the way up. Negative 110, we start to get some noise. And then I'll go down to negative 120. Negative 120, 110, and 100. So at negative 130, there's just, which is as low as the signal generator goes. It's supposed to be, from the factory, it's supposed to be good to uh, 0.2 microvolts, so this, this could very well be out of calibration. But we'll just use this as a kind of a, a reference. So here's the radio. You have to, of course, pull the cover off. Then you have to take this shield off. And this is the basically the front end board, the RF amp. Uh, I have recapped this thing. The electrolytics go bad in these. I just recapped this with through hole components because I, I, uh, this radio is not in that great a shape to start with. So you can see here, you can see here. This is the where the extra added front end amp goes and you can see all the unpopulated parts and what what Motorola does if they don't populate this and they just put a capacitor here to to run the RF coming in directly in without the preamp so what I need to do is I need to remove this and then I need to populate this area and one of the major drawbacks to this thing and I can see right now is that this is a ceramic uh, material that is like a giant heat sink and that's an understatement it will I've tried to solder to this stuff before with very limited luck but we're gonna give it a try if I screw the radio up I'm not that worried about it these radios can be had off of uh, eBay rather cheap. And basically this is what you get in the kit. Uh, and the seller was uh, 115 volts, like 115 volts, 115 volts. And then he sends out, he sends you an email, and my printer's completely out of ink, with pretty good instructions 
Uh, he says the board is ceramic. If you preheat the board with a hair dryer, it's easier to solder. I've had the best luck adding a little solder to each pad to make the solder make a solder bump. Well, it looks like this one has solder bumps already. So, um, and then he gives some sends some good high resolution pictures here, which again my printer is junk. So I'm gonna probably have to. But he gives instructions here on how to do it, so all I got to do is just uh, try and do it. I think the biggest holdback is going to be trying to solder to this um, this board. For this, I'm just going to use this. Uh, I don't know. I've been using this so long. I don't even remember what is it. A 30. This is the best soldering iron I've ever owned. 35 watt. This is the best iron I've ever owned in my life. Uh, I mean, you got tweezers, and I got this thing that you wear on your head with a magnifying glass on it. Uh, so, let's get started trying to figure it out. I guess I could get my heat gun and try and warm this thing up a little bit. I might do that. I'm going to play with it first. So I'll start with these two 100 um, ohm resistors. I believe that's what those are. And there they are right there. Try to do this without shaking. Well, you got some other resistors here. It's that one right there. 3.3K. We got a Zener diode here. We got the transistor. Uh, one thing I will most definitely agree with is you heat this thing up. I'm afraid I'm going to crack it, but you heat this thing up, the solder actually flows. I can't get it to flow with it cold. Okay, I kind of screwed up here. I, I I put the wrong capacitor in the wrong pad and then I couldn't get the thing off because I couldn't heat up both sides at once. So I, I ended up getting it off, but I peeled one, one side of it off. I'm going to put it on upside down and see if it works. All right. Now, I think I did this all right. Uh, here's our Zener diode, transistor, the two resistors. That should be the 6800. That should be the 3300. This should be the 510 right here. Um, this is the capacitor right here that I pulled and I peeled one of the, the sides off, but I think it's going to be okay. I could probably actually use the capacitor that was here in here. I have a feeling it's the same value, but I'm not sure. There it is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool down like for a while because I got it real hot. I can't say uh, strongly enough that the hotter you get this thing, the better the solder flows. I mean, it makes a huge difference. So I hope I didn't crack it because I, I know I got it up, you know, pretty hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this completely cool, then I'll clean the flux off and we'll come back and examine it. Here's what it looks like with the flux all cleaned off. It, it looks like it came out okay. It's tough to get the things down on there flat when you're soldering um, each side separately. But um, I don't know. The uh, signal strength test will be the uh, determining factor whether I did it right.
I used a little lacquer thinner. I took the I took the band off the diode there, but it's um, it's definitely uh, on right. Okay, test conditions are exactly the same. Right now we're on negative 110. Sounds a little bit better. I'll go to negative 120. Negative 110, negative 100. You know what? It is better. Uh, it's probably 5 dB better. 3 to 5 dB better. It's real hard to tell, but it is better. Negative 100. Let's set this all the way up. Negative 100. Negative 110, we start to get some noise. Negative 110. Sounds a little bit better. And then I'll go down to negative 120. 